So hello everybody, peace and love. How are you out there? Today I just wanted to go over the instructions. All right, let me just readjust my camera here. Uh, kind of give you guys an overview of what I'm expecting on this uh, next lab related to drone mapping. So we're taking a, a little bit of a, a right turn here. Um, not that we're not gonna come back to Arc Pro or GIS. I mean, all of these things really are related to uh, a broader word used in the industry that I like to use called uh, geospatial. Even remote sensing in itself is a dis is like a subdiscipline or science uh, within uh, geospatial. And in this context, I'm referring to geospatial in the same way that you would also refer to as GIS, kind of the all encompassing as you guys are experiencing. Um, GIS has its own discipline within that, um, which is, you know, how to use ArcMap and a lot of the theory stuff that we learned in 20. Um, so we're still within the remote sensing world, uh, focusing on the, the, the science of photogrammetry within that and the, the, the dynamic and um, really up and coming uh, technology that's emerging uh, within geospatial uh, is photogrammetry from drones. So we're going to call that drone mapping. And for those that were with me in the field, uh, you got to see in action what we did, uh, where we set out and we planned a mission um, and uh, let the drone do its autopilot work, flying, flying around, capturing the pictures in very precise sequence. Um, all of that uh, you know, what it was doing and why it was doing it is part of the theory that you guys are already, you know, learning in this module. Uh, but what I want to do here is uh, share, uh, I, I, I'm going to show you what, what to do. And, and, and those are things like uh, where I'm sharing the images with you. <clears throat> so everything that we captured live in the field as I'm making this recording uh, today, March 24. Um, but you're going to download those photos and then you're going to upload them into a uh, photogrammetry processing software. And that's known as Pix4D Cloud. So it's a cloud-based web service. Now you don't need to have um, really a robust computer or anything to do this. You just got to have a good internet connection because there's, a, there's a, a, almost 200 images that we're going to be working with. Once it gets up in the cloud, you're good to go, um, and and you're 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 solid to do the the work for this lab. So, to make this happen, uh, first thing you're going to have to do, as I share my screen with you, the first thing you're going to have to do is da, 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 get on the web and go to a website known as cloud.pix4d.com. So you see what I've typed up here, okay? And enter that again, cloud.pix4d, P-I-X, the number four, D.com. Um, it will take you to this uh, general demo data site here. Sorry, trying to re rearrange my screen a bit. But um, these are all variations uh, or different um, data types that you can practice or observe uh, this software. Ultimately, they want you to buy this, okay? Uh, the school doesn't have a license of it yet. So we're kind of working on this quasi trial, which is okay. Uh, you're gonna, uh, there, there's no uh, enter your credit card information or anything like that, I promise. Uh, they might bug you to buy it, but you can unsubscribe from those emails. Um, so with the trial, you're gonna get two full weeks of um, access to using this software, which is gonna enable you enough time to do the lab, okay? Um, so you go here to start free trial and ready to try your own data and you say, uh, sign up. Okay, so fill this information out, okay? And you'll get an email asking you to confirm, which starts the clock on your uh, trial account. So be, be um, prepared uh, to make sure you've got 
you know, enough time to post your results. Don't just do this right away and then not come back to it until weeks later, because then you'll have to re you can recreate another trial. But the problem is your project will be gone. So you have to kind of start all over. I just recommend, like I said, trying to time it, try and time it right. Okay. Um, go through, create the trial, confirm it, then you will come back. Let me close this. Uh, you will come back to uh, cloud.pixwordy.com and there should be a login. So when you log in, then you will be presented with a page that looks like this. Um, you'll probably have, since mine, I've got all kinds of um, pre prior projects, um, but that's okay. Uh, your stuff's not gonna look exactly like mine. What I want you to do is we're gonna try to emulate what I've already done here. But you're going to go over to um, new here. Let's see, download. Oh, sorry. Before you do that, before you do that, just keep a pause on this for a second. Um, go back over to Canvas and you need to click on this link right here in Canvas to download Lab 7 data. When you click on this, what's going to happen is it's going to take you to Google Drive. Um, and it's a zip file wait, waiting there for you. And uh, this is a essentially a folder full of a bunch of images that you're gonna use for this project. So you need to grab this from the internet, copy it onto your computer, and then re-upload it, okay? Um, you can use this little button right here. I might ask you to sign into Google, that's fine. I don't think you have to, but... Uh, download. Uh, don't worry, I didn't send you any virus, I promise. Uh, you can download it. And then, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so what's going to happen? I'm going to cancel this because I don't need all of this sitting here. But what's going to happen then is you will end up with a folder like this uh, where you have drone images.zip, probably in your downloads folder, right? Or wherever your files go. Locate this thing, okay? Locate this .zip uh, um, file. And then go ahead and double click it. And you need to copy all of these pictures, all of these images. These are all of the images from the capture uh, on uh, March 24. So the simplest way to do this, uh, if you're using Windows, Control, hold down Control, push A, or select all of them. But basically, you need every single file in here, 176 files. And then you can right click and say copy. And then go to a location on your computer where you're saving all of your, you know, uh, lab data, whatever, right? Play a place where you are keeping um, data that you use for this class, other classes. You keep it. Uh, if you've organized it in a way, I hope you have, where you have stuff for this class in particular, that would be great. Um, I'm going to use, for example, like I have a folder here called Chabot. And so Chabot Spring 22, Geog 21. Okay. Um, again, yours isn't going to look exactly like this, but that's okay. Um, within your parent folder, and even if you do this on the desktop, that's fine as well. Um, create a folder. I'll just do it right here. Actually, here, one second, let me rename this to drone map one. I'm trying to replicate everything I did a few minutes ago. So you're going to go ahead and create a new folder. Call it uh, drone map, okay, like that, okay? And then there's nothing in there at this moment, but when you right-click and say paste, which is this little thing, okay, it will, um, blah, 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 it's right there, oh, what? Interesting. Uh, oh, I wonder if that's because I just tried to download it. It probably is. You should not receive this error. Here, let me try this one more time. Because I have the same folder located here. So here, I'll take these out. This is the exact same replica of what I was just trying to do. Select them all. Copy. Then back out. Um, go back here. Drone map. And then I'm going to go paste. You guys need to get really good at downloading data, unzipping it, 
organizing folders. It's a pretty important um, technique, uh, just managing data in general. Um, it's going to be crucial uh, when you're working with geospatial uh, environments. So here we go. Let's try this again. Paste. Okay, there they go, right? This little toggle down here. So I'm going to cancel that. There they go. Um, forgive me for one second. I think I have a visitor, so I will pause this recording and... Okay, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, we have all of our photos now within this drone map location, okay? And this is where we want them to be. You do not want to um, be trying to upload photos from the zip itself. They need to be permanently stored somewhere on your machine, like on your hard drive somewhere, right? And that's what we just did. Now, uh, after you've done all of that, uh, da, da, da. you'll go back to, sorry, my screen's a little messed up. Okay, you'll go back to Pix4D Cloud, right? We're back on this, log in, okay? And then go over here to new, and you could say new site like this, okay? Uh, go ahead and call the site Chabot, uh, I'm just going to call it real spring 22 like that create site okay that's going to create a little folder for you um, actually i have two of the same thing don't i that's okay let's see open this i do have two of the same thing uh that's okay so here i am this is my previous one where i was testing this lab but I'm gonna create a blank one uh, and start this over again, just to show you what to do, okay? So you go to here now, uh, after you open up the, sorry, back up, open up the Chabot folder on Pix40 Cloud like this, and then go new, new, uh, new, uh, new site like that. Um, sorry, backing up, uh, I've done this before, I promise. Uh, new data set is what we do this time. Okay, new data set like that. Perfect. Now it's asking you to um, assign the data set. So um, assign a site to the data set. So we can say right here, bingo. Okay. Uh, and then upload your images for processing. Okay. And we are going to say next. And then this is very simple, okay? You just, uh, there's, there's two ways to do about, there's two ways to do this. Uh, the way I like to kind of work is a drag and drop format. So I'm going to, again, I'm looking at my drone map, okay? Drone map and I've got all the images, 160, 176 images. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna uh, select all of these and then I'm just gonna drag them over like this into, uh, I know my screen looks probably different than yours but I'm gonna drag them over into this box here until it turns blue, say, okay. And it's just essentially telling me what I've done. So that's cool, say next. And then uh, before you uh, keep going next, 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 right up here, uh, remember in 20, we talked about coordinate systems and projections. So that's what this is asking you about. And I know we covered the theory pretty extensively, which is important. Um, and we did do some georeferencing uh, as my memory serves me right. So in this case, it's, it's asking you what projection is the data supposed to be in. Uh, you could technically choose anything you want. There's really two obvious choices, which would either be uh, UTM, which is more or less uh, for, uh, um, uh, sorry, metric units, or something called state plane, which is for imperial units like feet, uh, et cetera. So enter this little code here, right? Highlight this and enter 2227, and it's gonna automatically find for you this, the correct state plane. Well, we actually told it what to do, but it's, it, it locates the state plane uh, so that everything can be in feet uh, when we go in. And, and also in, when we do volume, everything is going to be in yards. So that's what we want here. Go ahead and click on this. Okay, so change that. If you don't change this, all your stuff's going to show up as meters, which is fine, but I'm just trying to give you a heads up, okay? 
You can leave these other things the same and click on next. Uh, we don't have any ground control points. Remember those were from, again, that georeferencing lab in 20. So we'll say skip and process down here. And this is the waiting game, okay? So don't close, don't close your browser. That's very important. If you close the browser, it's gonna stop the upload, um, but let it do its thing. It's going through and it's uploading all of your photos. This might take five minutes. It might take 50 minutes. I don't know. It depends on your computer and your internet connection, more importantly. Um, so just be patient. Uh, you'll get emails about, you know, um, You've uploaded images, uh, your project is in a queue. This was this called was, um, the queue waiting for processing. So it's not an instant thing. It takes about maybe a half hour after the images are uploaded and that's fine. You just wait it out and then you work with it when it's, um, uh, but, but first and foremost, you gotta get these images uploaded. So sit back, maybe do something else, but let this happen, okay? Uh, check your email. When the, when the email comes through and saying that you have, your project is complete, um, go back to Fixwordy Cloud. And let me back up for a second. So again, time has elapsed, right? Imagine that. And then come back to your um, Chabot 22 folder. And you'll see your project looks something like this. Okay, it'll look something like this. So click on this thing. Okay, and it'll bring up the data itself. Um, it should, there it goes. Again, it depends on your, your, I don't know why mine is lagging, I guess, because I'm uploading these. I'm actually gonna cancel this because I've already done this before. Um, I think it's slowing down what I'm trying to showcase for you guys. Okay, so here we are, and look at that, it's going much faster. Um, what happened is, uh, after all the processing is complete, your uh, deliverables are available, right? They've been processed for you, um, uh, again, through photogrammetry. Um, again, I know this is what we call a black box solution, um, and it's not the end-all, be-all, the only option out there. Um, but in terms of ease of use and giving you guys some perspective of what can happen, what you can get out of uh, doing photogrammetry and, and drone mapping, it's a really nice demonstration. So uh, you'll have your data set here and you've got, your, you've got layers on this side. So it's very familiar with uh, the GIS world, okay? And uh, you could turn these various things on and off. So what we're looking at initially is a base map with the ortho, what's called the ortho mosaic, okay? And that's all of your pictures mosaiced and essentially glued together into one big picture. Because remember, we started with 176 pictures and now we've taken all of those pictures and we've put them together like this, okay? Um, also, the, uh, the, the pictures are what's called rectified. So they are, positioned in all of the features are in the correct position uh, of where they are, relatively speaking, meaning that what we've done is we've created a map for all intents and purpose. On top of that, the thing has a geo reference and that came from the GPS on the drone itself as it was directly taking pictures. That's called direct geo referencing. So all of those things built in, this uh, Pixworthy cloud used all of that information that came directly from the drone images and gave you this product, right? Um, so your ortho mosaic, you can toggle that on and off like this, okay? And I know it's not much to look at, you know, so far. Um, you can also turn the satellite picture on down here. I think this is kind of cool to give you some perspective because people always ask me, you know, what's the point? And there's satellites and Google Earth and everything does all this for me. And it's true, if you zoom in on some of this satellite photography, I mean, this is pretty phenomenal stuff. Right? We could pick out cars, even some of these utilities and so forth. Problem is with satellite photos is we don't know when they were captured. Um, and the resolution uh, of the photos is not, and brightness and other things is not nearly the same quality uh, that we would get from something like a drone. So uh, 
let's see, let me find a good example of that. Um, do, do, do. Yeah, I mean, I think this soccer field, and, and, and expect there to be a, a little bit of a misalignment. That's okay. Um, there are ways to fix that, which I can share with you guys at a different time, but that's not necessarily the purpose of what we're doing here. Um, just for example, look at this road. Look at the difference between these uh, features and assets on this road, right, and the curb itself. Um, something like these little bushes here, we can make it out that there's one, two, but we really don't know, you know, uh, hard to make out what type they are per se. If you were an arborist or a landscape uh, person, then it would be pretty, it would be uh, much more helpful to have some perspective like this, where you have a much clearer picture. And uh, if you zoom in on some of these things, I mean, you're really picking out now uh, within a centimeter or two, some very um, fine resolution between each pixel in this mosaic, okay? Down to the point where you're seeing individual leaves kind of stacked up in this gutter, right? So again, benefits of doing this, the time thing, because we have this that just happened, right? Maybe it's a disaster or something like that that you're trying to, um, you know, image. And so pulling it from a satellite from who knows when ain't helpful, right? Um, and you get this extra clarity and detail from having high resolution. So I want you guys to kind of play around with this stuff and then um, head over to uh, this section where you have these various, what are called annotations, okay? And so your annotations are gonna be really measurements that you can make. Um, you can also place little markers like points of interest. Um, uh, so I want you guys to kind of play around with all these various things, but I'll show you an example. Okay. So like if I say line like this and I click on it and I zoom in to, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe one of these paint stripes like this, right? I just picked a random one in a parking lot and say I click on it like this with the left click and I drag my mouse over like that, right? So you can see in real time how it's providing me a measurement uh, in feet of my line that I am, you know, drawing and digitizing uh, as I'm going. And, and I can click multiple vertices about this, which will extend the line, the length of the line. Uh, when I'm done, I double click and then the line is finished and my, um, my label is there. Okay. Now that wasn't the line that I particularly wanted. I was trying to make one of like this paint stripe. So here, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come over here to this little trash can and click delete, get rid of that thing. Uh, let me try again. So my line, my line feature, my line tool is still highlighted. I'm gonna go ahead and try this one more time and make this try to be like right on, even if I zoom in, kind of be right on. If I was a, an engineer and I needed to measure this, it'd be pretty important that I get in there precisely, right? So like that, boom, how about that, right? And again, it's not perfect, but um, pretty darn good. You can also come back and edit the line by clicking on the arrow and then clicking on the line itself. And I know that this isn't the easiest thing in the world to see because we have white on white, but there are these little white, um, nodes to indicate the vertices. So like say I meant to put it over here. Okay, there you go, changed. Or I meant to put it over here, right? Or I meant to add another vertice that goes over here. Well, here's a little plus button like that, right? And you can actually add as many of these as you need to in real time. So, you know, what I expect is, I, this is a pretty intuitive interface. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to kind of navigate uh, once you give it some time and play around, okay? Um, but there are a couple of other things you can, uh, do, uh, changing the color. Um, it also gives you these measurements. So I'm looking for, this is your first, uh, note for what I'm, want you turning in. I want you to turn in three separate linear measurements, uh, somewhere from the map. When I say turn in, uh, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you, um, take screenshots um, of each one of these measurements. Also, so of the line and also of the uh, information here. And forgive me one second, because I have another interruption, but I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Uh, this part of the recording taken on a different day, hence different clothes. 
Okay, but uh, back to where we were, I know that we had left off where I was showing you guys how to do the measurements. And we are now gonna move on to where I show you how to do some of these other tools in here. Um, moving down, there's um, an area measurement. So if you do this polygon here, say you were looking for, oh, I don't know, maybe the area of this little island and this parking um, structure, you can go through and start clicking and it will, just like with the line, give you the area in size in square feet. So double click, there we go, okay? So I definitely want uh, a couple of areas in your final deliverable, okay? And then this one's kind of cool too. You could do a, a, a circle. Um, so like if I kind of come over here and so what's kind of circular object, I don't know, maybe down here on the baseball diamond, something like this, like that, right? It just establishes a radius and then draws a circle based on that. So that's pretty neat. Um, other things that will be valuable to you um, and what I'm looking for are some markers. So go over here to this point uh, annotation here like this. And if we scroll down and we um, say, click on this little feature here, for example, bam, it establishes a little marker, right? So what I'm looking for is for you to uh, label these. We could say handicap, uh, something like that, handicap one, um, and then that's parts done. So, you know, I didn't really mean to make that one. So it says marker two. The thing we got to be careful with this tool is it just kind of keeps going until you click back over to the arrow. So let's go ahead and remove this one. I'll do that by clicking the trash can and yes. Okay. Um, so I'd like to see a couple markers also in that. And then I'd also like to see, and this one is what I think is the most fun. Um, over here, this is called a volume. Okay, so what the software is going to do is it's going to take um, essentially a polygon that you digitize and then it's going to try to evaluate all of the mass, right, all of the volume of a particular object that's in either above or below your polygon. So imagine your polygon's on more or less a plane and then you have things above it or things below it or both. Um, so, you know, this is very useful when it comes to Folks working in uh, an earthworks environment, uh, like in a mining pit or a landfill or aggregate site or construction site where there's a lot of dirt moving around, those are the most obvious answers there, right? But really anything that has mass you can measure uh, or, or is void of something, right? You can actually measure holes too. Um, but in this example, let's try and do something like this big building here, for example, right? So um, I'm gonna do a simple little, oops, I'm still on the marker. Uh, look at that, I didn't mean to do that one. Let me get rid of that. Uh, here we go. So I wanna do the volume one right there. And I'm gonna make a little polygon around this. Okay, like that. It's not perfect, but there we go. So I'm gonna let the, uh, software think about it for a second and then in order to complete this operation you have to say compare volume so like this or calculate volume is what I'm talking about so it gives us um, a whole bunch of what's called cut and then a whole bunch of what's called or and then a little tiny bit of what's called fill the cut would be anything that is a mass above the plane if this is our plane here anything above that would be the um, uh, the amount of material within that, and then the fill would be anything below. Um, you know, I'm kind of curious now as I'm looking at this, and I know there's not a lot of examples. You guys are probably going to copy some of the same things I do. Um, but just to show you, what if I did something like over here? Because I think this is kind of like a tall brush, uh, maybe covering up some kind of uh, utilities or something. So there should be a hole kind of in the center if you, ca if you catch my drift here, if I do this like that, and then say calculate volume. Okay, exactly what I was thinking, right? So here we go, fill volume, right? Um, 
let me try to show you some perspective of what I'm talking about. It's 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 one thing to to look at this in a 2D, you know, overhead picture perspective, but this is what you're really going to get the wow factor. If we click over here on the left side where it says 3D like that. Okay, it's going to give us the 3D render, okay, of our um data set. So everything that we collected and, and give it a minute because uh, it might take, you know, even based on the uh, Wi-Fi speeds, mine's pretty fast, but it's, it's rendering, it's rendering, kind of providing a high definition 3D model uh, of, 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 of your data site, of your site here. So that's what's happening here. You have what's called a point cloud, which is um, just a millions of actual little points that, um, create like almost like a scanned 3D point, uh, scanned 3D mass of this project site. And that's what we have here in, in real time looking at the 3D. So you see with the right click of my mouse, I can kind of zoom things around in 3D space, which is really fun. Yeah. And so here's the fill that I was talking about, or I'm sorry, here's the cut that I was talking about before where everything above my plane here on the ground in this case would be the roof here. I know that it's invisible, but imagine if you were kind of going straight up and then um, calculating how much volume was in this building. You know, the sides of the building are missing. Well, that's because we took overhead shots, okay? Doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. It just means that sometimes when it comes to facades of things, sides of things, uh, you miss you miss out on some of that. There's techniques to, to, to work around that, but uh, not necessarily important for this lesson. Now over here, we did, uh, that one actually shows it pretty good, but over here we did the plane on the top of the bushes like this, okay? And so what ended up happening was it took the fill volume, see my fill is uh, minus 45, so it took all the fill of this big hole here, this is a big hole, because the bushes at the are kind of the peak and it's some kind of cover for all this utility or trash cans or something like that, right? Um, yeah, and you could come around here. I know, like I said, this is not uh, an ideal like earthworks environment, but you can kind of try to simulate this stuff by coming around and measuring like truck cars and trucks or bushes and other buildings. There should be enough features for you guys to be able to do some uh, unique analysis here. The playground equipment, the benches, that kind of stuff, okay? Um, so I'm looking for a couple of those, right? I'm looking for a couple of those. So. I will be, um, check the, you'll see it in the announcement uh, and, and on the actual instructions. Um, I'll outline exactly how many screenshots I'm looking for, um, you know, and how many uh, uh, um, met, uh, lines, areas, and volumes I want, right? A couple each time. That's, that's more or less what I'm going for here. Um, so let's see. The other thing you're going to do is you're going to, um, I'll just, I'll just give you an example right now of how we're going to share uh, one of your screenshots. So I'll use like this one right here, right? Because what I want you to do is embed your map. Uh, I want you to share your screenshots. Those are just going to be pictures, but then I want you to embed your map on Canvas. Okay. So we're going to get there in one second. Let me go over here to the screenshot part. And however you go about taking screenshots, I think it's best if you can kind of do, I like this snipping tool in Microsoft. Let me back out for a second. I know I'm moving kind of fast, but if you go over to Windows and you do this thing called snipping, it creates this, it's uh, this little kind of scissor tool. It's pretty neat, it's built in and you can use, uh, when you say new, you can essentially just come in and create a little rectangle of the area you're, you're working with. So if I do something like this, right? that would suffice as one of my screenshots. And I'm gonna save it here. You gotta save all these. So I'll just call it a volume example. Well, I'll just call it volume one. How about that, right? Uh, save it, make sure you know where you're saving your stuff. And then I'm gonna go over to Canvas and uh, I put the discussion here. So this is where you guys are gonna submit your work. Uh, lab seven discussion, open it up. Okay, so with the screenshot, you're going to come in and uh, you're going to embed your picture. So images, upload your image, and then here's my example for you, right? Say open, submit. 
Okay, and you're going to be providing some text as well uh, based on the instructions that I give you guys. Um, but uh, here's one of my screenshots. So the other, you, you're, you're going to be having a whole uh, a handful of these. And then the other thing I want you guys to do is embed your map itself, which is pretty fun. So let me let me go over to here again, back over to the Pictwitty Cloud thing. And then if you go over here to where it says share like this, okay, click on that and then click this here where it says embed like that. Um, okay, use, so I guess we have to do two of these examples. Let's go ahead and copy, first we'll copy the mosaic and then we'll copy the, the point cloud. So first we'll do this one copy like this, okay? And then back over here, back over to Canvas. And in your reply, uh, you're going to have to probably find it. But if you look right here, there's a little dot. And then you'll find this little cloud looking button like this. OK, this is where you can embed code, right? So that um, if you have something that essentially it's like taking a piece of the website and putting it directly with the display and everything. So I'm going to say OK to that and submit that. OK, and so there's my map. Shows up right there in Canvas. Really neat. Um, let me do another example with the cloud portion, the point cloud itself. I'm going to go back to the software, and now I'm going to copy the textured mesh and point cloud. And I want you to copy both of these and embed both of these. So copy and go back over here. And uh, it's not a paste, but an embed. I almost pasted there. So an embed, okay, embed the code, submit. And there is my 3D version. So I've got the, the assignment is a 2D, a 3D, okay? And then you're gonna submit all of the screenshots that I asked for, okay? Um, actually, as I'm thinking about this, I'm going to type it all out right up here. So you'll see it directly when you go to this Lab 7 Discuss uh, page. Um, and I wanna have it in, a, uh, in, an, in an announcement too um, that you've probably already read. Um, but that's going to do it for this assignment. Um, definitely a different one and a fun one, but I hope you guys enjoy um, having this experience and get in touch if you need anything. I will chat with you guys the next time. Okay, take care. Bye for now.